we have enlisted the help of two WKU football recruiting gurus. And across from me here, we have WKU Herald football recruiting beat writer Jordan Wells. Jordan has been extremely active on the Hill as a cross-country manager and also has experience working with football, basketball, and even volleyball. And over here to my far left is someone who exhausted his four-year eligibility at the Extra Point Sports Show. Definitely wished he would have redshirted, but that's Zach Ryle, a WKU Athletics intern. He's going to join us to crunch down some of the numbers for this recruiting class. Now, guys, one of the big things that really a lot of people tend to notice about these recruiting classes is that defense wins championships, but offense, well, they, they put fans in the seats. What is this offense going to really look like for uh, this recruiting class? Well, this offense is really following the system that Coach Taggart has brought in here, the West Coast system. Uh, no tight ends in this class, which we really didn't need any, but a ton of running backs, three main running backs overall uh, with Elliott and with Allen and then with the big man, Wales. And I think Wales is a huge get. Uh, he's a shifty guy. He's got the vision that Bobby Rainey had. Uh, it's really kind of interesting, these three running backs. You had Wales, who's more of a shifty guy. You have Elliott, who's a straight power back, potentially could play fullback in my opinion. And then you have uh, Allen, who really is just the all-purpose back of the group. They did a great job recruiting with the running backs this year. Uh, I think another big part is wide receivers and offensive linemen. Um, we're getting four starters back on the offensive linemen. But Wes Jeffries is gone. He started over 40 games in his career. So uh, they're going to use English and some of those guys to plug those holes. Wide receivers, Austin Akins has a 42-inch vertical leap, which is crazy for a football player you know, coming out of high school. So that's going to be great. Flewellen is 6'5". Everybody knows that. He's extremely tall. He's going to make a great downfield threat. Uh, that will help the top stretch the field. How do, you, how do you replace a guy like Wes Jeffries when he has 40 games under his belt and you have no person really there to, to really right. help these young guys out? That's tough. You know, he's a senior leader. He a, was a big player. He was great. Um, made the all Sun Belt team. That's a tough replacement to do. Uh, but they've got some guys in line that they've been grooming. Uh, Cameron Clemens and, you know, some other guys like that. So they should be able to replace him. Uh, I don't know about him lining up at fullback, though, for that touchdown <laughs> that he had last year. Well, one name that a lot of people remember from a couple years ago, Ed Hazlett. He was a very highly recruited tight end. He's yeah. converted to tackle, and he's put some weight on. So that could be a guy that you could see that potentially could fill in and step in. Now, with all these offensive recruits, each coach of every school, and Taggart, I'm sure, has his eyes on what position he needs to start building up. Did you think he filled all of his targets in this class to help that offensive keep moving along? I think absolutely he did. I think, you know, when you lose someone that's Bobby Rainey, you're never going to replace a Bobby Rainey. Bobby Rainey is, right. you know, the all-time leading rusher here at WKU. That's not going to – you're not going to be able to replace that. But he was able to get pieces of that. And with a 13-man class, you can't get just, you know, it's not just one or two guys. you just got to be able to plug and choose which ones you can. Running back was a big need. We said wide receiver was a really big need as far as to get at least one or two more bodies, and they did that, and I think it was a good class overall, Jordan. Right. I agree. I agree. Like we talked about earlier, too, with the running backs, we got three different types. Uh, it's really important that you've got backs for different situations, whether you're on the goal line, whether you're driving downfield. You need to be able to plug guys in for different situations. So they plugged all the holes that they need. All of these offensive players now for WKU, these, recruit, these recruited players, were there any big surprises out of this group that just really shocked a lot of fans and maybe even a couple of football players to, uh, that we got? Well, uh, it wasn't a, much of a surprise to me, but Ace Wales committing here uh, was a big shock coming out of Louisville. Um, he's the leading all-time rusher in Jefferson County history. So for him to be the all-time leading rusher in Louisville and then to choose WKU over his hometown school, I think was a surprise to a lot of people. But him and Demarcus Smith and Flewellen and some of those guys I've interviewed them a couple times. They're all really excited to play together. They've talked about it since they were little. So I think that's why he ended up ultimately choosing to come to WKU. And, uh, you know, like you said, eight, over 8,000 rushing yards in his career. He might be the next Bobby Rainey. Absolutely. <laughs> I, th I think the fact that we had this many players out of the state of Kentucky, I think that is the biggest surprise to a lot of people. Last couple of years, you know, you really struggled to get guys away from UK and UofL's grasp. But, you know, this year, I think WKU really was able to sink in, both on the offensive and the defensive sides, to really get some quality talent away from those two universities. Now, we mentioned all these players, and we look at a guy maybe like Wells. Which of these offensive players do you think can come in and have an impact in spring ball and possibly going into the fall? Uh, for me, there's two. I think it's Wales and I think it's English. 
I, I really like English. English can play to me, tackle, guard. He pulled really well on film. I think he's going to be a guy that's really going to be able to step in. Maybe not start from day one, but he's, I think he'll be on the two deep uh, depth chart. I also think Wales, I mean, Wales has got the talent that we are loaded at running back. You've already got Keyshawn Simpson and Sumler and, you know, and, and Edwards or and, Andrew, sorry. I got it there. Yeah. We'll yeah. get it. But, um, I mean, we are loaded there already. So picking up three more, it's going to help. So we have three running backs now from this recruiting class. How soon are we going to be able to see these guys? I want to see these guys. I've seen <laughs> these vid videos. They're really impressive. Yeah. I want to see these guys on this football field. How, how soon are we going to be able to see I that? agree. Um, I, I just caught up with Ace recently. Um, my interview, my full interview will actually be in the Herald print edition tomorrow. Um, but he told me a little bit more about his shoulder. Um, he did say that it's still coming along slowly you know he's working hard you don't get over 8,000 yards in high school without working hard Absolutely. but yep. it is coming along slowly I think Leon Allen is a guy that you might see out on the field a lot of people don't know he was academically ineligible until his senior year of high school so not a lot of coaches knew about him of course being from Manatee County coach Taggart knew about him and as soon as he got on the field, Coach Taggart jumped in there and offered him. He actually added a late offer from Miami, University of Miami. And uh, he still decided to stick with WKU. So I think he's a guy, he's big, he's fast. I think he's got a good shot to see the field early. I think, same question to you, just keep it short here. But I, think think? I think it's Aikens. I think Aikens can come in right off the bat. Uh, we were talking right before the show that you know, Aikens potentially could be the biggest guy in this group. And I mm -hmm. think uh, he'll, he'll be able to come in right away. All right, well, next up on the Extra Point, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the defensive signings. Stay tuned.